Let's now hear this firsthand from Maxim Kolchim, who is joining me from Spain today. Maxim uh, is the Knowledge Graph platform lead at Beringer Ingelheim, where he implemented such a decision intelligence platform on top of a Knowledge Graph with us. And I'm happy that we have Maxim here today. Hi, Maxim. Hi, Daniel. Hi, everyone. Maxim, can you tell us a little bit about the data management challenges that you were trying to address and that motivated you to build such a platform at the beginning? What were the goals that you were trying to achieve at Beringer Engelheim? Yeah, so I would say, yeah, I've learned that uh, more or less pharma companies has the same issues. So as we know, the amount of data grows constantly data is handled differently and within their own systems uh, at each stage of the drug development pipeline. And also data is not published or reused in a way it could be done, right? So we could have better data publishing and data reuse culture. And it results in a situation when data scientists and data analysts, researchers have to spend their time on bringing data together for data analysis or answering business questions. And each use case basically generates new data without data reuse. And a couple of years ago in, in BI, in Bjorn we started a, a big program called BI Dateland to address this, these challenges. And my, my team, Enterprise Knowledge Graph team is, is part of this program. So the goal of the program is to make our company stronger in data center culture, uh, address the challenges we, we mentioned and implement technical system that targets this, these challenges. Yeah. Maxim, you told us about topics like data centricity, bringing data together, reusing data. Those are points that I've also heard for other approaches and, and previous approaches to data management. What is now the key difference? What is different to the knowledge graph based approach? And, and why did you choose this approach compared to the previous approaches like data warehousing and others? Let's compare these two, uh, these approaches like data warehouse, data lake approaches with the knowledge graph approaches on the, in the conceptual le level. So the first point I would mention is data model, H how we define data model. And so the data model in the knowledge graph approach defined together with business. And there is no separation between conceptual, logical, and physical layers. So you define the model is just one thing. So you define concepts, relationships, and attributes together with, with the business. And you use the same concepts when you write queries, when data analysts, data scientists, and then business analysts write these queries. And this model is, is not somewhere outside of the data. It is together with the data. So the data actually references this data model directly. And that's a good thing here. Second point is explicit links between, between data points in, in, in a data set. In the knowledge graph, we have global identifiers, which are globally unique, first of all. Secondly, these are not just identifiers, not just numbers, but they also describe the protocol to access the data behind the identifier. So this, at the end, we have explicit links. Next is federation across different knowledge graphs, so different data silos, if, if you want. So this federation is possible thanks to, to SparkQL and to SparkQL standard. And yeah, it's, it's not a secret that the graph data model, so graph data model is more flexible than tabular model. So you can extend it while you improve data. So you, you ingest new data before even you need to uh, explicitly define the data model. You can massage and, and transform your data to the data model you have. And the last point I would mention is data virtualization. You don't need to copy data always to the knowledge graph. You can virtualize it. If you have data somewhere in, in, in Postgres, Oracle, or Microsoft SQL Server, you can describe the mapping between tabular model and graph model, and the engine will use this mapping on the query time. You mentioned uh, quite a number of different aspects to the previous approaches, but if you now go one step back, what are the what were the key elements that you considered when building such a platform? What were the key components that you took into account? So working with knowledge graphs requires you to think about 
things which you didn't consider in the past. So in, in the data warehouse approach, let's say. Specifically, it requires you to think about how will you deal with relationships between data. You need to have a way to create identifiers and reuse them across knowledge graphs. For that, you probably need a, a smart tool, but also uh, you need organizational approaches and processes in place to tackle this. Another component which is required is, is a collaborative tool for ontology and taxonomy management. You need to bring business to this activity because IT folks, me is the main expertise, of course, and they cannot create this, this model for you. So business needs to have a good tool for that. Here, yeah, we leverage MetaFacts offering and we, we started using MetaFactory's new feature when, when, where users can create ontologies and taxonomies in a collaborative way. We just started, we, we are learning, but it looks promising. The last component I would mention is it is a tool which allows data consumers with or without IT background to really explore uh, the data across knowledge graphs. Because, I mean, we are talking about identifier reuse and uh, linking data silos together, right? But we still have tools which are views on top of one database and people don't, don't see like, okay, you're talking about connecting data to, together, but at the end, we have a one tool looking at the one database. So this company that I'm talking about should allow people to look at the data across knowledge graphs. So without boundaries, they shouldn't need to reconnect from one database to another. So the user experience should not have any boundary between data sources, but they should be able to see how they benefit from it, explicit links between the knowledge graphs. Having such a tool also makes it easier to explain why you need explicit links. They need explicit links because then you, they will be able to explore data. So here we also use MetaFactory because MetaFactory has a special mode which allow you to federate across knowledge graphs. So we build a, a use case agnostic application where users can use a keyword search to find a, an entity they, or data point they want to start data exploration. When they find it, they can get a kind of 360 view over this, this entity, let's say a compound or a clinical trial. And then they can start exploration from this node to another node, so on, and until they satisfy it and uh, until they uh, answer their business question. And this, with this data exploration tool, it's easier to show the benefits of knowledge graph approach. You talked now a few times about several knowledge graphs and how they connect. In the past, I have talked more about the enterprise knowledge graph, but you now mentioned that there are several. Could you elaborate a little bit on this? What does it mean that you have several knowledge graphs and how do they connect at, at Beringer? Yes, so in Beringer we have, as of today, we have more than seven use cases at the different stages of development. We have a couple of them in, in production and others are on ideation or POC stages. And all of them together, they form an enterprise knowledge graph. So from our perspective, an enterprise knowledge graph is a set of domain specific knowledge graphs and set of shared ontologies and taxonomies developed by the business. So all these things together form an enterprise knowledge graph and of course the knowledge graphs need to share identifiers otherwise they will be data silos which we of course want to avoid one of the first use cases was around publishing data coming from several laboratories in beringer and, and publishing them in a way so that data scientists actually can can use this data together can bring this data together and do analysis in the past, uh, the data was reside on in their own system in each laboratory. So now data scientists have a single place where they can get all the data together. And it's not just uh, another data silo because data published in, in uh, following the FAIR principles and following the knowledge graph approach, it means that we, we now can leverage the benefits so we can Data scientists can take data coming from laboratories and easily mix it together with data coming from other places. Other use cases, we, we have one use case we have in IT, where we also have a bunch of different IT systems with data hidden behind them. So they want to mix data together, like data about tickets, 
data about incidents, data about IT systems, IT system leads, and so on. Use cases in document management. So we have a use case where which allows researchers to find relevant documents to the documents they are working on, and so on. So you mentioned uh, several use cases that you have already uh, realized at Birmingham. One of the use cases was the the first one that we started our work and our collaboration with was the laboratory data use case. If you think back at this first use case from which then the enterprise knowledge graph step by step evolved into other use cases and basically grew from that. If you look back at that time, what were like the lessons learned from this first use case and what would be your recommendations to those starting now with such an approach? What would be your advice for them if they start now out with such a decision intelligence platform? So two learnings. So initially the use case team created the data model, the ontologies and taxonomies together with the consultants from MetaFacts. So that was the, the first iteration they did. But then after some time, they did a second iteration and significantly improved the data model, the, the ontologies, and they did it themselves without help from the, from the, from the consultants. So the learnings here is, looks like probably you don't need an ontologist always in the team. So you need uh, such a person at the beginning, probably. And, but. Yeah, at the end, the team can learn how to do data modeling and how to build ontologies, how to define concepts and relationships between them. Yeah, these were uh, business folks, data stewards, domain data owners, they work together on this and I see that they succeeded. Now they use this second version of the ontology. Second learning was that, yeah, we in, in Beringer we use, as you may guess, we use MetaFactory and we learned that building Custom applications with MetaFactory for use cases was relatively easy with, without much effort required and, and resources. So our goal as a support team is to is to provide tools and services for, for use cases for, for data providers so that they could focus on building data, on bringing data together, improving the quality of this data, cleaning it, and so on. And this should be their main job. The rest should be done for them. The rest are the services which we provide. And one of the offerings we learn is important is use case agnostic applications. So we build use case agnostic applications so that the, the data providers could focus on the data creation and data management instead of building custom applications again and then, and, and then maintain these custom applications and so on. Okay, Maxim, we have heard that you, you know, established this new platform and that you established this new t tooling to to get a knowledge graph to work at Beringer. But were there any cultural or organizational changes that were required as well? Well, have you somehow had to adapt to this new technology also on the organizational level at Beringer? Yeah, that's a good question. Because, yeah, I mean, technology cannot solve all the issues and uh, the, the knowledge graph approach also requires uh, organizational changes and, and not only on knowledge graph approach so when you try to improve data management in the organization you, you need a cultural change usually so in in, in the idle program we apart from building technology technological capabilities we also work on defining new new roles and responsibilities. So I would mention two roles. First one is data domain owners. So the people who actually need to own data and need to need to be responsible for the data they in, within their own domain. So they need to own it, they need to think about how to publish it better, how to make the data better for the data consumers. So they are accountable for this data, so data domain owners. And the second role is data stewards, the people who actually work together with IT, with data engineers, with other folks on finding data sources, bring this data together and align this data on a domain model. So they are responsible for the data and they, they are part of each team. But yeah, actually, the, the challenge I would say is, is actually implement these roles in the organization and make it work. So this is what we're trying to, to do in the Adelaide.
if you now look into the future, what are your next plans? What are the next steps that you're going to take? And where do you think will your knowledge graph journey take you from here? Yeah, as a company, we already spend quite some time on this initiative, but I would not say that we've achieved everything we wanted that we need. So we still have a long journey. Um, I see a lot of potential in the technology and, and in the approach, but it's not just about technology. It's about changing in an organizational culture and structure, which takes a lot of time. We see quick benefits, but I believe we, we will see even more benefits in the long term. We could talk about decision intelligence and machine learning when looking towards the future, but even the easiest things like data exploration or the possibility to search over data across data silos are already great achievements, I think. Thank you very much, Maxim. Thank you.